people ask you, what do you do for a living, you know? And uh, you say, oh, I'm a sculptor. And they just have this like momentary reorientation and they look at you like you're half cocked, you know? And it's, it's, it's like the most anachronistic thing to be. When I first started making all this work that was based on a digital replica of my own body, my intention was to really just make it uh, as depersonalized as possible. It wasn't about me, it was just a body. So I shaved my head when I did that, and then I made a lot of work laboriously turning it back into sculpture. When you use yourself uh, in your work, uh, people will always press the button of, Are, is he a narcissistic? person. I'm really more of an abstract artist and so the idea of kind of creating a digital model of a, of a body uh, and then using that digital model like a lump of clay just to be pushed and pulled and mal it's malleable, it's transformable, that's the metaphor. My work is about the loss of identity. It's about, uh, you know, how we're being turned into information how identity is being stripped away from us slowly. It's about how I'm, I'm disappearing, and we're all disappearing in some way. From the beginning for me, what was really interesting was work that somehow came out of like the left, the, what was left over after an action. You know, it was Jackson Pollock, you know, and Lucio Fontana. So it was either like this sort of drip or the slash, the cutting of the canvas. Those are both gestures that manifest themselves in the object, so that the object becomes like the residue of an action. I had this big head that I'd use for something else. I was trying a few things with it, and I thought I'd brush a coat of rubber over it, and uh, uh, it didn't work out. So I tried to salvage the piece and peel the rub rubber off, and to my complete surprise, it just came off in one piece, you know, like a glove mold would come off of a glove. My impulse was to immediately nail it to a wall. In that moment, it satisfied so many things that I was interested. I started to make these pieces where I would dump all this stuff into these large head molds and then fill the molds up with an archival resin. It became a way of finding a purpose for all these dead ends and all these kind of fleeting, kind of halfway there things. I found these really old topographical maps. Somehow I arrived at the idea of embossing them, and so I decided to uh, like stamp this binary code into them. And then it was a question of like, what what's the binary code gonna say? So the viewer looks at it and kind of has to figure out what it could mean. Using these sculptural tropes, these motifs that are ancient or are timeless in a sense, those forms to which sculptors have gravitated for hundreds if not thousands of years. You know, it's, it's a conversation with the past, it's a conversation potentially with the future, but it, the point is that like there is a continuum and a narrative in art. When you're walking around out in nature, this is a physical engagement. I think sculpture is about that, an engagement with physicality and what it is to be a human. But it can also open up other passages, even if it can be some kind of a reflection of culture. I think that the experience should be somehow mysterious.